Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we'll be going into the time of the summary and the question and answer. And today, by the grace of God, we have in our midst one of our key leaders from Nigeria. Uh, he is uh, both the Deeper Life Campus State Pastor for Undo State and also the uh, Head of Service of the Undo State Government. And <laughs> praise the Lord. And he's here together with us. He wants, uh, we've been together in the ministry for over 30 years. He's my elders in the ministry as well. So and he's here, uh, that's in the person of Pastor Sunday Ogunde, Kayode Ogundeli. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are excited, you are before the Lord this morning, pray, or this afternoon. Bear with me. I'm not used to it. Praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for this wonderful opportunity to be together. Um, it's uh, no doubt a thing of joy. I believe the Lord wanted me to be here today because uh, I told our pastor when I came in, I said it would be wonderful, even if it's just going to be a day, that I will want to squeeze everything into it to make sure I come to Abadim to see him as well as to fellowship with the children of God. <laughs> and the Lord granted my desire. Amen. And that is very true about the word of God. Uh, yeah, is it not true? Uh -huh. The desire of the righteous shall be granted, including the desire to come to Aberdeen to fellowship with the brethren. Praise the Lord. So, thank God for the sad scripture this morning. I don't know if there is any question from the study. I've been asked to take the summary. I know when he sent the thing to me, I didn't know I'd be taking summary. I just thought... So, but as a pastor, a pastor is always a pastor, either in Nigeria or in Aberdeen. Praise the Lord. Any question from the study this morning? Okay, my sister, please ask your question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry, I can't stand up because of a little baby sleeping. Okay, no problem. Yes, sir. Um, when God called Moses and the said he's, he can't talk properly, he's a stammerer. He learns that God can do all things. Why can't God, you know, make him talk properly instead of providing a run for him? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. God can do all things. No doubt about that. But you see, what things we are written, they are written for our learning. And God has, is, there is always a purpose for actually showing us whatever he has revealed, either through Moses or through any of these other personalities of the scriptures. But if you have gone through the side of the scriptures very well, you will see that what we saw concerning Moses is not only limited to Moses, we have seen some other people in the scriptures that also had similar circumstances, but they never allowed their limitations. They never allowed what they see as their shortcomings to stop them from answering the call of God. What is important to God at all times is our willingness, our readiness to go at his word. Once you are ready, once he sees that willingness in you, to do what he says you should do, then all other things should be left for him. And it is obvious that once we are ready to surrender, our little, uh, you know, like that young boy, uh, the loaves of bread and the fish or the fishes in his hands, he was able to, he was ready to surrender 
all that that boy brought that thing for was just for his own welfare. It wasn't even enough to take care of him throughout the period. But he surrendered it to God. And God, Jesus multiplied it to feed the people in their thousands. So all that God is always looking forward to at all times is our readiness and willingness to surrender and say, Lord, I am here. Use me. Help me to be able to carry out this assignment. If you look at the New Testament, and I want us to read a passage of the scriptures in Second Corinthians. Chapter 1. Sorry, I think it's in First Corinthians. Sorry. First Corinthians. chapter 1. You will see from verse 26, it says, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised that God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. God, our creator, knows all we need to accomplish his purpose. And so it is not for us to dictate what we want God to do for us to accomplish that purpose, all we need to do is surrender and let him do the rest through us. He did that with Moses. And he did that with even the uh, disciples. If you look at Peter, he was not learned. He was not educated. But Peter did what the Lord wanted him to do. When the Lord met him and said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He did not say, Lord, but I'm not educated. He followed, and because he followed, all that the Lord wanted to do is to actually fulfill that statement of, I will make, is the one that will make. All that you need to make you a success in life, all you need to make you a blessing to others in your neighborhood, all that you need that will make you fulfilled, all that you need to make you um, a fruitful believer, bringing souls into his kingdom. He has all that, and he knows how to impart those things into you if only you would give what you have in your hand. Moses was a stammerer, and he made it clear, I'm a stammerer. How will I be able to speak and convince these people that you have something, you have, you have a message for them? God told him, leave that for me. And when Moses went to Egypt, was the message clear to Fury or not? It was clear. And he has not changed from being a stammerer. So whatever your situation is, whatever your circumstance is, God can make something great out of who you are. You see, for, most, for Samson, it was the jawbone of an house that he had in his hand. And something happened. When you look at the prophet of God, Elijah, you will see that Elijah had, there was this woman who said, you know, um, I think Elisha, what do you have in the house? He said, just, uh, what does it, what is it? Uh, oh, thank you. A, a, I don't know what, the, just a, a bottle of oil. And the man said, just go and borrow. And that little was enough to break the yoke of debt from our family. And when it comes to usefulness in the hands of God, we have seen clearly, you see your calling, how not many mighty, how not many noble. So it is our willingness, our readiness to submit, to surrender to him, 
that makes us useful. And he makes it, he, he, like the scripture says, he will make something that would amaze us, something that would surprise us ourselves. And that's why the Bible told us, it was the psalmist who declared, I am a wonder unto many. You can be a wonder unto many if you will, like Moses, surrender that little thing in your hand. Your time, your resources, your talent. Once you are ready to give what you have, no matter how precious they are to you, it would always bless that thing and make something bigger to come out of them. So all we need to do is remove every resistance, remove every excuses, remove whatever you see as a limitation that can stand between you and your usefulness to God. And once you do that, you'll see God manifesting himself. The promises of God in Christ, they are ye and amen. And there is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing he cannot accomplish through us. As we are in this land too, God can use you as a mighty army for him to pull down strongholds and to throw down, to cast down the kingdom of darkness. All we just need to do is say, yes, I know I'm here for a purpose. God, yes, you might have been here because you came to study. It might be because work brought you here. Whatever the reason, there must always be one major focus. And that major focus is I must do the work. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. Our time on earth, not even to talk about in UK or in Aberdeen, is limited. But we must have this at the back of our mind. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. I pray the Lord will help us. He will use us. We will be vessels of honor in his hands in Jesus' name. We will see clearly from, I don't think there is any other question. So I will quickly summarize. We will see from the study we have gone through this morning, the, uh, this afternoon, permit me when I keep saying morning, it's morning in Nigeria when we do service. <laughs> so you will see from the study, the birth, call, and commission of Moses, that indeed, for Moses, it came at a very difficult time. Moses came at a time when a decree of man has been made and that decree says all male children should die. They should go. And you will see that this is also very similar to what happened in the days of Jesus. When Jesus was born, a decree was made by Herod, kill all male sons. But Jesus came as the savior of the world. And you see, that is a very important fact we must always keep at the back of our mind. I'm a child of destiny. God has chosen me to fulfill a purpose. And as long as that purpose is yet to be fulfilled, nothing can stop that dream from coming to pass. You, you must settle it at the back of your mind that God has a divine purpose for your life. God has a plan. No matter the laws, no matter the rules, it is going to be done. Because the scripture is clear. Many may be the devices in the hearts of men. But the counsel of the Lord, he shall stand. He shall stand. So, for Moses, we, we see clearly a manifestation of faith in the mother and the parents. We see clearly the result of working in line with God's own divine purpose. You see, many at times we fail to accomplish what God has proposed and planned for our life, not because God is not able, but because we have not put ourselves in a state of partnering with God. The mother and the father of Moses partnered with God. One, by ensuring that even in their marriage, you will see the scripture said, the, a man of Levi went and married a woman of Levi. You see, the fruit, the scripture says, a goodly charge. You cannot in any way be expecting something great, something marvelous to come out of a marriage that is based on deceit, a marriage that is based on unequal yoke. When the foundation is right, 
the building will certainly stand the test of time. But when the foundation is wrong, you see that the building will not be able to stand the test of time. For Moses, the foundation that the father and the mother laid was based on equal yoke, not on equal yoke. So there were people who shared the same like precious faith. And that's why in marriage, we must always understand that principles have been laid. And when you follow those divine principles, you will get results that will bring joy and blessings. So after they have married, they had a child in a difficult time. But they still believed God. It is easy to believe God with your wife when both of you are of the same mind, of the same spirit. And so they had that faith. And the woman said, no, I cannot see this child dying. Even if other men or other children are dying. And you must always understand true that it will be to you according to your faith. The woman knew that others were dying. The children of others were dying. But she made up her mind that her own child, something extraordinary must happen. So let's always understand that when you think it, always know that God is also able to work it out for you. He is able to make those great things come to pass if you follow it up with faith. Moses' parents followed it up with faith and things started working out for them. And that's just it. So we must, as believers, always remember that situations, circumstances, no matter how negative they may be, it should not be the basis of your decision in terms of taking decisions of faithlessness. In fact, in difficult times, in hard times, that is when you need strong faith. And your faith will always make you survive such times. In fact, someone said that tough time never lasts, but tough people does. And who are those tough people? In times of challenges like now, there are always going to be people who have the seed of faith sown in them. And the Lord will make you one of those people in Jesus' name. You see, we also see from this study clearly that for Moses, they were, well, sorry, for the mother of Moses, there was this, you know, kind of, uh, what do I call it, link between the mother and the daughter, the daughter that stood by the side of the river. You know, I, I, I looked at it and I felt this girl, because some of us will look at it and we say it's just a, 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 an issue of mere coincidence. But I said, no. For the mother to have put that thing there and say, watch, it is because she believed something. And that faith was also extended to the daughter. The daughter that stood there at the instruction of the mother, was also looking forward to something, that this, my brother, would not die. And immediately she saw, like the prophet Elijah saw, you know, he told the servant, after praying for rain, he said, go and see what is happening out there. The man went and came back and said, I, I see nothing. He said, go again. And the man came back and said, but when he came back and said, I see something like a cloud. He has not said I saw rain. He said it's like a, the hand, a fist of a man. And then he said, that is it. We've gotten it. So that little girl also had that strong faith. Let your faith be infectious. The faith in you, let it affect those who are around you. As a mother, let your faith affect your daughter. As a father, let your faith affect your son. Impact upon them. Because that was what the parents of this young lady did. And that was why when she saw the woman looking at the baby and then going to ask her, somebody to bring that baby, she was not thinking that, ah, that baby, ah, they will kill him. 
immediately he saw the she saw the lady carrying that baby, having compassion. She just ran there and said, I have somebody who can help you. Who asked that? You can see faith has works. It has action. Her faith made her hack it out. Immediately she saw the woman. He said, I have somebody who can take care of this. And it was the word that actually did the wonders. Because the woman said, the woman did not even ask, how did you know that I'm looking for somebody? You must be an Hebrew person. Maybe you are the one, obviously. But because God is in that act, in that business, every other thing didn't matter. And all she said was that, go and bring the woman. And the mother of Moses ended up taking care of her own child and getting paid. Getting paid for being the, child, or the, the nurse of her own child. All things always work well together for good for them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. As a child of God, know that no matter what the circumstances may be, all things will work well together for you. Because God has a plan, a purpose for your life, and it will be fulfilled. I say it will be fulfilled. And so today, we see that Moses, after receiving the call, what God told him precisely was that I have seen. And do you know, brethren, that God sees everything? Many a times we say, yes, I believe God sees everything. But we live as if we don't even believe. And that's why when you have challenges at times, you say, God, where is your eyes now? Ah, but you are the one who said you believe that God sees everything. If you know God sees everything, then you won't be asking God, why is your hair? I. And then when you are doing some things that you know this thing is not right, if you are conscious of the fact that God sees all, you will also not get into such things because you know that God sees me. Even a woman in the Old Testament, remember that servant of uh, Sarah, Hagar, when she was faced with trouble, no water, and God said, there is, there is water somewhere there. And she got the water to give to her son. He said, ah, oh God, I never knew that you were even there seeing me. She thought she was an outcast. If a woman like that could understand that God sees her, God sees you. God knows you. God knows whatever you are going through. He said, I have seen the affliction of my people. And what did God say Moses should go and do? Go and tell Pharaoh it is time. Once it's time for your deliverance. Once it's time for help to come from above, nobody can stop it. Because God will do it at the right time. It is when it is not time, and we are too much in a hurry, that we'll be saying, oh God, why is it like this? Why is it like that? Why are you too late? You know, for us as children of God, I know most of us here are from Nigeria, but I'm looking forward to a time when we we'll have even indigenous of uh, Scotland populating this church. The Lord will use you. I say God will use you. Amen. But you know in our country, to get to a position of authority, it takes a lot of things. And some people would even, some people would even be asking me, ha, you are a Christian. How did you get there? I say, good things are also for Christians. <laughs> so in, they will be wondering, how did you do it? I said, I did my job very well. When I got into the civil service, I was just, I knew what is right and I was doing what is right. And I was giving my best to the system. And at the right time, even when I couldn't lobby, God picked me out from the crowd and gave me what he felt was right for me. So, no matter the crowd, God knows you. He sees you. And he can pick you out at any point in time when he feels it's time for you to get there. And he will do it for you in Jesus' name. So today, the Lord has spoken to us. We can take that to the Lord in prayers. God, help me to work with you, partner with you like Miriam and the husband, or like uh, the mother of Moses and the husband did. They partnered with you in faith. And Moses became a, 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 an instrument of deliverance. God can do it also through you. 
don't think of your status. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not even a citizen. I'm not an indigent. I don't know anybody here. How, could, how can God make something great to happen through me? He can do it. He can use you. We have seen it in the scriptures. If we have faith, all things are possible to him that believeth. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you because whatever is written of our time, they are for our learning. And we thank you for the instruction through the scriptures, which is aimed at making us as men, women of God, to be truly furnished unto every good works. We trust, Lord, that as we have heard again, and as we have seen through the life, the birth of Moses and his call into ministry, I pray, Father, that for every one of us here, every step we take, you will assist us to take it on the basis of the truth of the scriptures that we have learned in Jesus' name. Father, here in this nation, we pray that you will give us grace never to be unequally yoked with unbelievers in Jesus' name. The strength we need, true unity of purpose, to move forward, we pray you will give unto us in Jesus' name. We look up unto you at this time that as you did through Moses, that he found grace in the sight of the daughter of Moses and became great in Egypt. The resources of Egypt was used to build up his own life. I'm praying you will do the same in the life of these your children. Here in this land, they will find grace and you will lift them up even beyond their imagination in Jesus' name. We trust you that, Lord, as Moses was used as an instrument of deliverance, use your children here to deliver many from the bondage of darkness and Satan in Jesus' name. You will use them as your own instrument to bring many out of the uh, bondage of sin in Jesus' name. We trust that your church will continue to be strong. Your church will continue to be vibrant. Pray you will give a spirit of un unity of purpose to each and everyone here in Jesus' name. As we continue in the service today, we pray you will bless us. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. For we've prayed in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. What do we say to our pastor? Let's rise up and give him a clap. And what do we say to him again? And what do we normally tell our visitors? We want to see you again. Is that not what we normally tell them, sir? They just say they want to see you again, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we we'll continue with our worship service now. <laughs>